Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. The initial inspiration for my project this week is circles. I basically started my process by drawing some circles with my pencil. And then since I wasn't 100% sure where to start, I thought I would just apply a very neutral color on the full background. And sometimes doing something as simple as that can just get the whole rest of the process flowing. I have a few new iridescent colors that I want to play with for the creation of this painting and I sort of want them to be the stars of the show so I decided to go with colors that I think will go well with the colors I want to use um, the iridescent colors I want to use and also colors that will go well together I think this indigo along with some quinacridone deep gold will be really nice so I'm going to color around the circles because my intention is to use different colors inside of the circles. This is going to give me a chance to practice a little bit more precision painting and um, just to try and do something different. I am going to work sort of on a neurographic art piece. Uh, the circles are sort of leading me in that direction but I'm not 100% sure yet, so I'm just going to go along and see how I feel as things progress. So I mentioned that I'm going to be practicing precision painting and I guess I, I need to sort of <laughs> uh, explain that a little bit. I, I want to paint around the circles but I'm not stressing over whether or not I'm painting perfectly around the circles. I try to let go of the idea that things need to be precise or very detailed or exactly a certain way. Um, I, I don't like that kind of painting. I find that it puts a lot of pressure on me. And you know, circles are very defined shapes. And if I wanted to make them completely perfect, I could probably drive myself a little crazy doing so. And I don't want to do that. I, my painting process is one that I want to be more zen and relaxed. And so I let go of the notion of seeking perfection. And if I happen to go over some of the lines I've created, that's okay. It's part of the process. It actually will add something to the painting. And as I go along, I'm going to be adding other layers of colors, adding some ink and doing other things. So there's no real need for things to be quote unquote perfect at this point. Initially, I said I'd be working with quinacridone deep gold, but I decided after looking at my palette again that I think I'd prefer to work with quinacridone burnt orange. It's a much deeper, richer color, and I think it'll look nicer against the indigo and the neutral tint that are already in the background.
The paint on my paper is now dry. I've rubbed the salt that I put over the indigo off and now I'm going to move on to adding some lines. And typically when I do neurographic art, I would not, you know, put straight lines in the painting, but I want to do something different. So this time I pulled out my ruler and I'm going to add some straight lines and just, you know, just a few of them here and there to create my composition, I guess, or to continue working on my composition. The quinacridone, burnt orange, and the indigo are a little too similar in value. And so I'm coming in with my black marker and I'm going to go around the contour of the circles just to add a little bit more contrast. Now that my circles are standing out more, I'm going to come in with the other end of my dual tip zig marker and I'm going to start to add some rounded shapes where lines are intersecting in the same way that I would do it when I'm doing my sort of version of neurographic art. Uh, in this case, it's a little different because um, the lines are not creating the X's that normally I would be looking for. So I'm just going to the areas where the lines are meeting with another line and, and I'm rounding those areas off. And if you just uh, keep following what I'm doing, you'll really be able to see what this is going to result in once I'm done. Um, because I am going to come back in after I'm done creating these little initial guidelines and I'm going to color in those areas. To color in the areas that I just drew in, I usually prefer to work with a brush pen, especially if I'm working over watercolor paper because the texture, the textured surface of the paper can really wreak havoc on felt tip markers. And so it's quicker for me to work with a brush pen because I can usually use a lot of ink um, to cover these areas that are a little bit bigger and it also uh, is not something that's going to ruin my brush pen for me to work with it on top of the paper.
When I'm not 100% sure what to do next, I try to remind myself to just go with the next simple element I can think of adding. And in this case, that's vertical lines. I mentioned at the beginning of my video that I have some new iridescent paints that I want to use in this video and the paints I bought and that I'm going to be using are from CSY Art Gallery and I'm excited to show them to you because I often get asked what would be a good substitute for star gold if star gold is not available where you are and I think this is it. This mini tin box of handmade watercolors has six different colors of gold. Um, I should say they're half pans and so um, they're not quite as big as some of the pans that you can order from Kramer Pigments. However, what I do find is that the colors, and I, I think the color that most closely resembles star gold would be the Arabic gold, uh, although the 24 karat Merc Gold is also really bright and shimmery. They're all actually really shimmery, these little paints. I, I was so pleasantly surprised to discover them. I actually watched a video on YouTube uh, from another creator a while back and she was using these paints in the UK. And I often get questions from people in other countries as to what paints they can use if they have um, no access to Kramer pigments and I found this to be accessible in the UK this CSY um, gallery the CSY gallery products are available in the UK and I think they're available elsewhere in Europe and they are definitely available here in the United States and they have a wide variety of iridescent paints that are so shimmery and relatively inexpensive. This little mini tin box, it's um, a tin box of six half pans, runs about $13 US. And if you compare that to one full pan of Star Gold with Kramer Pigments, which runs at $10 US, I think it's actually really good deal. <laughs> so I'm super excited about them. I'm also excited that they are as shimmery. Maybe not. Well, they're pretty darn close. I don't know if they're exactly as shimmery as my star gold, but they are very shimmery and they are beautiful colors of gold. And for this painting in particular, I decided to work with the classical gold. I'm thinking the 24 karat Merc Gold would have also been a really good option for this painting.
when I ordered my first mini tin box from CSY Gallery, Art Gallery, I also ordered this little set right here. And initially I wanted to use the color on the top right, uh, which is called Pink Pearl, because I thought it might look somewhat similar or have somewhat similar effects to my Tropical Sunrise Magic Green from Kramer Pigments. But then when I was painting this painting in particular, I felt like that color was not the right color to go with this painting and I wanted something to sort of brighten things up. And that midnight blue, which is a beautiful iridescent blue on the top left corner of the palette, felt like the perfect color. And I am super happy I decided to use it. It is beautiful, it is very shiny, and I think it adds just the right amount of color and contrast to this painting that I needed. that's it. That shimmery midnight blue was just the perfect final touch for this painting. And now I'm ready to take the tape off and move you in closer for a look at all of the details in the painting. I'm so happy to have discovered this beautiful little set of iridescent paints. Um, and definitely I'm loving that gold, but really the biggest and most pleasant surprise for this painting was that shimmery, gorgeous midnight blue. I really think it was the best thing I could have done to finish this painting, and I guess I'll have to try to give that pink pearl a try in another painting some other time. Thank you again for making the time to join me on this journey. I hope this little painting project gave you a spark of inspiration for your next painting project. Wishing you all a wonderful week and 
Happy creating!